Joining us now is Dr. Robert Murphy, a professor of infectious diseases at Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Good morning, doctor. Good morning. How long will it take to get to the source of this situation? Could it just be a, a, a mix with medication these women were taking, uh, something beyond the, the drug itself? I don't think it's going to take very long. I think they're gathering the information as fast as humanly possible because they want to get this uh, situation behind them and uh, move forward. But it's obvious. It's just women. It's younger women under 50 years of age. It happens very quickly, up to 13 days after you take uh, that vaccine. Uh, so, you know, there are no men involved so far, no older women. Uh, so this vaccine has been tested in tens of thousands of people. I think they're going to get to the bottom of it very quickly. Dr. Murphy, there's people looking at this and saying, well, it's six cases in 6.8 million doses that have been administered. So why put a pause on the vaccine for people that aren't in that demographic? Well, yes, you could look at here. You look at it this way. There are approximately it's 6.8, but approximately 7 million yeah. people have taken that vaccine. So six out of 7 million. But it's only in women that we're seeing this problem. So that's really six out of 3.5 million people. And then it's only women under 50. I just I read in the Atlantic uh, last night uh, that someone had reported to them that was only a million women under 50 years of age. So it's really six in one million. That's one in 166,000 people. So you know, if if you look at the highest risk group, you know, it may be the best thing after they look at all the data and analyze it. It's too soon to do that. You know, maybe there's a group of people that should not take this vaccine. A uh, report says Moderna is 90% effective after six months, and I think people feel like, well, when I get a flu shot, I only get it once a year, so I thought if I got a vaccine, I'd be good for a year. Does this mean I'm only solid for six months? No, it, uh, Larry, it's, what it is is they only have six months of data. Because remember, these studies uh, were just uh, done in the middle uh, towards the um, uh, fall of last year. So you have to go six months after the last person in the study uh, got the vaccine, and then it takes a couple months to do the analysis. So that's about as fast as you can go. Now, six months, though, is a critical time. Uh, six months, they can actually file for full FDA approval. Everything now is under emergency use authorization, but uh, Moderna and Pfizer both will have their complete six month data very soon in the next month or two, and they can file for full approval. So that, that's a huge step. And that doesn't mean it's gonna stop working. Uh, it's very good that it's uh, stable out at six months. You know, this is probably gonna continue if it's like any other vaccine, nine or 12 months. Dr. Murphy, we're seeing images out of Brazil of, of graves being dug, uh, hospitals completely overwhelmed. Uh, what does the global picture look like right now in terms of COVID? Uh, the global picture is pretty bleak. Yeah. Uh, WHO has reported that, you know, they've had significant global increases over the last four weeks, like seven to 10% per week over the last month. So this is really bad. They're reporting in the last week, 4.5 million new cases and 76,000 new deaths. And it's led in a, a relatively small group of countries. So it's India, number one now, mm -hmm. the United States, number two, then Brazil, like we've all heard about, but also Turkey and France are in the top five. So, you know, it's it's just, it's popping up uh, around the world. The pandemic is not over. And it's right. not gonna be over until it's over everywhere. Mm -hmm. Let's get to viewer questions. My 19-year-old daughter received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine March 29th. By this time, would clotting issues be present? What are the signs of having clotting issues from the J&J &J vaccine? Yeah, so this 19-year-old uh, this girl, very similar to my own daughter, who's in her 30s, and had the J&J &J vaccine a little bit after this. Uh, so we're counting the days, too. Uh, the last, the longest it went out after the vaccine of the six reported cases, now maybe there's gonna be more, who knows, is 13 days, so it's relatively short. So this girl at, uh, who had it on the 29th is past the, the, the date uh, of risk according to the data that we know as of right now. Um, now, what kind of symptoms? Any kind of neurologic symptom, uh, even severe headache, even say abdominal pain, any kind of uh, weird thing, uh, if they had a seizure, uh, dizziness, anything neurologic, uh, they need to go get evaluated immediately because it turns out, even though this is a very severe complication, most people, up to 80%, can resolve completely. 
Next question. We're hearing that the Pfizer vaccine may not be effective against the South African variant. However, this, this was a small study done in Israel. Have there been any other studies on the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines related to their efficacy against this variant? Yeah, the, so the Israeli study was very interesting. Uh, they expected only one case of the, based on their statistics in their country, which they have a, a really tight control over. Uh, only one case, they had eight cases. So it was higher than expected. Now, the, the vaccine has been used. There's a, 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 a little bit of use in it in South Africa, the Pfizer vaccine, and the efficacy is, is, is reduced, but it's not reduced to zero. The AstraZeneca vaccine didn't work at all. So it, it, it does have an impact, but the impact, uh, it, it's not really well characterized, but we know it's less. Dr. Murphy, good to see you this morning. Thank you. Good to see you too.